Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farm, and today we're going to be setting up the solar panels that are going to be running my shop. And I'm going to be doing that in a little bit different way because I've got some concerns and some challenges I'm trying to overcome. I want my solar panels to be right over here, but I want them to be set up where I can aim them and where I can protect them from hail damage and things like that. So I'm actually going to build some structures that are portable that allow me to use those solar panels here, but also relocate them if I want to use them somewhere else. So first, let me show you the solar setup I've got, the way the system's designed and what panels I'm using, then we'll get started on the build. The 30 second backstory here goes like this. I've wanted to do solar for the last 15 or 20 years, but every time I looked into it, it was cost prohibitive. You weren't going to save enough on energy production to offset the cost of the system. And I still believe that's true if you have a company come in and install whole home solar. But what I believe is now true is that you can buy individual components and set up your own system and make it cost effective. To do my entire property on solar would be like $50,000 or more in supplies. But I'm doing a test run right now with a system where the solar panels, the battery, and the inverter to run this shop is only going to be around $3,500 in total cost for everything. Actually, a little bit less than that now that I think about it. More like $3,200. And the cool thing about the system is it's infinitely expandable. So let me show you real quick what my setup is like and what I'm running. And then we'll get into actually building the, the structure that's going to hold these solar panels. So the first thing I want to talk about is solar panels. Now, if you walk into even a cheaper retailer, like a Harbor Freight, or you go online to, say, one of the companies that sells power stations, and you order their solar panels, you're going to pay like a dollar to two dollars per watt of solar output. So a 200 watt panel will cost between 200 and 400 dollars. Sounds crazy, right? But even at Harbor Freight, they're over a dollar a watt. And that's not sustainable when you need 10,000 watts. So what you want to do is find an online supplier that sells bulk solar panels from high quality manufacturers. A lot of times these sites will have packages where you can get an even better deal if you buy 24 panels or 36 panels. But the company I got mine from is actually a sponsor of the channel. After I found their website, I sent them an email. They provided me with the first six solar panels. But when you look at dollars per watt, these are dramatically more cost effective. I said previously, you're looking at a dollar to two dollars per watt if you go retail. So these panels right here are 400 watts. At a dollar per watt, that would be $400 for a solar panel like this. These are $140 panels. They're coming in at 35 cents per watt. That's a great value. So these panels came from US Solar Supply. Now the exact one I have is a Solaria Power X dash 400 r uh, this exact solar panel is out of stock right now on their website but the company provided me with a similar panel that you can get similar price similar quality all of those things now these are all quick connect there's not you don't need to know any wiring to use them or anything like that it's all very easy the only thing you have to understand is the input capacity of your inverter and the output of your panels so you can decide if these should be wired in parallel or series but all of that is pretty simple so from this supplier six of these panels is going to be less than a thousand dollars and that's going to put out 2.4 kilowatt hours and it will be enough to get me a start on the system i'm running now if i was doing my whole home with all the 220 i'd need probably four or five times this much but you're still wanting to choose a good value panel the next thing I'm doing is just like the solar panels. This part of it, I don't have as much as I need, but this is enough to get the system up and running, make sure everything works, and then determine how many more of these I need. But this is a 48 volt. Now, technically it's 51.2 volt, but standard terminology is that this is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery. But I got this from Redodo. They're one of the, the best values I could find for these 48 volt batteries to power this 48 volt inverter. My system's going to run off of this Sun Gold Power 6500 watt 
inverter. This can run 110 or 220, but I'm initially only gonna run my 110 circuits off of it. Now I set up this sub panel right here. I pulled all of my 110 breakers out of this, pulled all those circuits into the sub panel, and this panel is now drawing less than 6,500 watts. So I can run the entire system off of that inverter and my solar panels and my battery will power it until the batteries run down, then it will automatically kick back to grid power. And the amount of electricity that my panels generate will be the exact amount of electrical savings on my electric bill. Now that I have my panels, I have to decide how to mount them. So I've been looking at, you know, how to angle these so that they get maximum sunlight. They say that your degrees of latitude at your location will tell you a rough estimate of the best angle. Now there are more complicated ways to find exact angling, but I'm setting my, my system up where I can rotate it and change the angle over time. So I'll set it up and I'll have it working. And then if I realize they should have been angled more that way and lean back further, I can easily do that. So what I want to do is build a rack to hold these and actually two racks because I want them to be manageable in size and I don't want them to be 50 foot long. I don't want the rack to take up a ton of space that direction. I wanna put a row here and then another row spaced behind them. So what I've done to this point is pretty basic. I went out and scrounged around and found up all the lumber that I had in my different sheds and I think I've got enough lumber here to build everything I want to do. So I've cut these, the panels are 68 inches tall, so I cut these to 66, plus the top and the bottom makes them 69. This is a frame that those panels are going to sit on. Now I want my legs coming from the back, and you'll see later, to attach to the side of this. So I made these bottom rails three inches longer than the width of this. So this, basically I cut it out to the shape and size of three solar panels. So each of these will hold three of my six solar panels. And now I'm just gonna screw this together through the bottom here. I've got some three inch screws. And after I put this basic frame together, I measured corner to corner to make sure it was square. So I'm gonna screw this together and then we'll show you the next part of the design. My confidence level in this was extremely high because I measured several times more than I cut. But I've got the first panel up there and it's, you know, hitting dead center perfectly. Now what I need, this is currently oriented as the top, but I'm going to think of it as the bottom and I'll flip it over when I get out there. I'm going to add another board on the top that sticks out further that basically is something for the panels to sit on on the bottom. This is our basic frame, but it's not the full setup. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach another board on top of here, and then I'll meet you outside, and we'll start getting this thing set up and getting legs on it. <laughs> so now we have a framework that'll hold the panels, but obviously it needs legs to hold them at an angle. I don't want fixed legs. There are two things I want with the legs. I want them to be adjustable, where I can change the height of this, and I want them to, to have a bottom structure that allows me to pick the entire thing up with a set of pallet forks and move it to mow under it or move it because there's a storm or move it because the seasons have changed and it should actually be angled a little bit or whatever the case may be. So the way a set of legs like this is going to work is if I wanted the panels to be at a 45 degree angle and the panel is five foot tall, then it would have a three and a half foot leg down and a three and a half foot leg this way. Now these panels are five and a half foot long and I want a 40 degree angle i played around with some different math and decided to make my legs four foot long. We already have a hole through the leg board, but now we're cutting a hole through our frame board. Like I said earlier, I haven't purchased a single thing for this project. All the wood and all the hardware and everything being used is stuff that was just laying around here, which is a benefit of doing a lot of projects and keeping everything. So we're gonna put this bolt through here with a washer and a nut. We're not gonna tighten this, this down real tight because we want it to be able to move a little bit. We're gonna tighten it down till it just starts to dig into the wood and call it good enough. 
All right, so this should swing out. Yeah, so there is our leg. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, and we're gonna take this thing outside and get it set up. Then once it's in place, I'll know if it's going to work this way or if it needs modified. We'll get the solar panels on it and we'll build the bottom structure. All right, now you guys might be noticing that I'm setting up solar panels in a shaded area. Now, I have given quite a bit of thought to the placement on these and I could still be wrong and need to move them. But for now, my thought is this spot right here will get sun from whatever time the sun comes up, you know, 6 a.m. or whatever, until about 6 p.m. I've been watching, you know, what time of day we get shade here. And like right now, it's about 7.30 in the evening and we're fully shaded, but most of the time this will be in the sun. And I'll probably aim it this way. The other thing about the way I'm doing my legs, it makes it kind of self-leveling. So I took my measurements for the height that I wanted the top of the panels. For a 69 inch panel and a 40 degree bottom angle, means I needed 44 inches here. I actually should have made it just a little bit taller because that's about three or four inches off the ground. So I should have made this about 47 and I can still change that pretty easily. So I probably will straighten that up a little bit because right now I'm at less than a 40 degree angle, which might be fine. I think my research said 37 degree angle. But I've attached this board on the back. And then I'm going to put a carriage bolt through right here on both sides. And you'll see it in a minute, but then I'm going to drill holes here, 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 about every inch where I can move this bottom out an inch and change the angle and I'll, I'll have holes run in each direction where I can just move that back pin to change my angle. So I did everything that I described already. I put the, the bolt in here. I changed the angle. This is now 47 inches tall. So we should have a 40 degree angle here roughly. It looks like more than that. It looks steeper, but we'll mess with it. And if I want to change the angle, I just move that bolt to the next hole. And I did the other side the same way. So it's been a couple hours since the last section we filmed and I have both sets of these done. There's three solar panels there, three solar panels here. And we'll see the finishing touches. So this is our frame here that we started with. I put this one by four on it to keep the, the panels from from trying to come out in the wind. I also put this strip on here to keep them from sliding out the end. And I made this cap right here pretty solid. Just a one by four here and a one by four here covering that seam. Same thing right there. Like I said earlier, I've got now this bottom leg where you can pull that pin out and move to the next hole if you want to change the angle. And then down here on the bottom, I mounted a 2x6 that I was planning to use to lift the whole thing up. But it's not strong enough. So whenever I try to pick it up, it, it bows in the middle because of the way this is turned and the way it had to be turned to attach the way I wanted to here. What I'm going to do tomorrow is do a vertical on top of this, maybe even a 4x4. I've got some 4x4s and run across here because this needs to be stouter. But once, once I reinforce this board, I should be able to pick this up and carry it. So if that works tomorrow, I'll take a picture of it and I might put that as the thumbnail on the video, the uh, mini skid steer carrying this whole thing around. But overall, this is a successful project. And when this started out, I was overwhelmed by the idea that I was going to do all the wiring to put solar into my shop because I'm not an electrician. I don't understand how all the wiring works. And then when it came down to actually doing it, if I just do one step at a time, I can break it down into bite-sized pieces that I can handle and I can understand. And that's what I've done here. And now I've done the mini split. I now have the air conditioning going. I've got the sub panel. I've got the solar panel set up. 
it's it's breaking down to where I should be able to handle this. And just in a couple days, I, I hope to have all of this on solar. But that's going to wrap up this video. So I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. And I'll see you next time.